This morning, oh my goodness, you guys are in for a treat. And I, I don't even want to call you a guest anymore because you've been here, what, like three, four times this year? You know, it's, it seems like we couldn't get him here for the last 10 years and then he's making up for lost time. But uh, Pastor Paul Goulet is one of my favorite people in the world, and uh, he's just been such a blessing to me and to this whole church. And uh, I tell you what, you guys are going to receive from the Lord. So buckle your seatbelts, be expectant of what God's going to do. Would you put your hands together for Pastor Paul Goulet? Oh my goodness. Great to see you guys. Ah, oh, you may be seated. Oh, what a thrill. I'm wearing my only Hawaiian shirt. I've never owned a Hawaiian shirt, but Lieutenant Kevin, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kevin bought it for me last time I was here. So I thought, I'm going to wear a Hawaiian shirt. Is that all right? I'm probably wearing it wrong, but <laughs> uh, this is to uh, just say I'm part of Kings. You're right. I'm not a guest anymore. Um, I really felt that God called me. I'm transitioning out of my present place. I've been senior leader there for 29 years. Man, as a six-year-old, I took that responsibility. <laughs> 29 years is a long time. And I just felt like, oh, man, I need a transition. And uh, I had a lot of miracles recently. i got to tell you about the miracles. Lots of trials, but lots of miracles. And I thought, you know what? In this next journey, um, I'm going to walk away from senior leadership. God spoke to me one morning about 4 a.m., he said, Paul, take off the crown. I don't know if you've ever had that kind of awake, awake sleep phase. It's coming out of REM. I wake up, I hear, Paul, take off the crown and put on a towel. Now, if we've ever read our Bible, we know what that means, is that I don't have to be in charge anymore, but I'm supposed to serve. So a really exciting thing is on March 11th, I'm no longer senior leader of ICLV. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And, and uh, March 12th, I'm a volunteer. I become a volunteer at something called City Serve Nevada. My, my dream has always been just, to, just to, to give it all away. And so I figure on this last chapter, um, I'm going, not last, but my next chapter, I'm going to just volunteer. And, and uh, City Serve is a, a ministry that I'd like to bring it to Hawaii. In fact, all of your 460 campuses. I already talked to Pastor Josh and, and Pastor Morocco. Uh, it's something, they've, I think they've given away 400 million uh, dollars worth of product from Costco, Walmart, um, Amazon, uh, diapers, furniture, drones, <laughs> it, uh, just crazy stuff. It's all brand new. And uh, it's being given away. Uh, it's called Gifts in Kind. So they have to give X amount away. So they decided to give it to a group called CityServe, my friend Dave Donaldson. And so he said, Paul, listen, if you'll take this and start it in Nevada, I'll give you the whole thing in Nevada. Just take the whole state. And I said, okay, how much does it pay? They go, nothing. I go, what's my budget? Nothing. Do you have a warehouse? No. Do I have a staff? No. So in other words, you're asking me to take a position to, to bring resources into the whole state, to serve the state, um, and you don't have a salary, you don't have a budget, you don't have a building, you don't have anything. They go, that's absolutely right. I said, that's an offer I can refuse. <laughs> I said, I'm... I'm semi-retiring. I'm not semi-retarded. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you get into prayer, and all of a sudden God calls you to do crazy things. So uh, walking away from a nice, comfortable salary and nice benefits and walking into nothingness, but obedience. And so when, when Pastor Josh said, would you preach about perfect love casts out all fear? He picked that scripture for us today. I said, Pastor Josh... I'm all in, man. Just that's one of my favorite scriptures and passages. So we're going to look at it right now. But I just want to tell you, great things are happening. Um, and I'm walking out uh, just a matter of a couple weeks and just going into the realm of just being a volunteer and trusting God for my finances. So I'm really excited about that. It's a new journey. People say, are you crazy? Yes! <laughs> and you're my family and, and, and the other part of what I'm supposed to be doing is I, I told Pastor Josh and, and, and Pastor Morocco I said I feel called to serve kings and I said you tell me where you want to go I'll go wherever you want me to go um, and just whether it's one Sunday a month or two or, or whether you just want me to go coach teams I don't care I said I, I'm really just got the towel around my waist I definitely don't want to be in charge I just want to 
serve others. And so I, lo- I love this church. I feel like I'm part of Kings. When Josh was prophesying at our conference, um, he'd give me one of the Kings hats, which are great hats, by the way. <laughs> and I got a Kings Kona t-shirt as well. I'd love a King's uh, Chapel Wahoo if you have one. <laughs> I'll buy it. <laughs> but um, that morning, I, I just felt led as Josh was going to speak. I put on the King's hat. And I went to church. Uh, and I just said, you know, I just feel so much a part of this church. And it's been 26 years I've been coming. And you're right. I didn't come to Wahoo for over 10 years because Dr. Morocco wouldn't let me. <laughs> he says, no, you got to stay on Maui, Paul. They got this. Okay, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> so I'm here for you guys, and, and it's a new journey, right? And um, I love you guys with all my heart. That's, uh, that's the truth. Uh, I did bring one book. That's all I brought. Um, your Feelings. It's about Your Feelings by Dr. Richard Dobbins, my mentor. And it's entitled Changing Your Self-Concept. No, we don't need that. Positive Ways to Deal with Depression. We never deal with depression. Guilt. That's people at the other church down the road. Anger, not us. And fear. Oh, fear. That's the theme today. So this, he wrote this book, and uh, he called me his spiritual son, and I inherited all his books. So now we just sell it and use that money to change the world. So we, I only brought 52 of them. So uh, I didn't bring a lot. They're over there. If, if not, if there's, I assume they're going to sell out in the first service because this book is phenomenal. It's all about feelings. Don't let your feelings control you. You control your feelings. People say, I just felt that way. Well, it's probably wrong. Because <laughs> feelings are just an indicator of something deeper. It's not, we can't be, fe- we can't be feeling driven. We've got to be faith driven. And faith means belief. Beliefs are thoughts. Thoughts lead to feelings. Feelings lead to options. Options lead to act. Choices. Choices lead to actions. Actions lead to consequences. Consequences lead to harvest. So if you want to, if you're in a harvest right now, man, I don't have any money. My dog hates me. <laughs> My cat scratched up the couch. <laughs> Life is terrible. That's your harvest right now. So you, what you want to do is retro engineer why you're here. Please don't blame it on God and please don't blame it on President Biden. <laughs> please. What we really have to realize is that God puts in our, our life. Jesus said, I've come to give you an abundant life. That didn't say if there's a Democrat, a Republican, a Libertarian leading the way. We are called to have an abundant life. Amen? So what we're getting into today is not being fear-driven, but being what? Love-driven. So it's, it, the concept of faith is beliefs. If I believe that I'm loved by God, that's called home base. Everybody say home base. It's based on a um, the concept of home base. Of course, we played base. Some of us played baseball. Um, home base is is the is place where you're trying to hit that ball. Remember that, and you slide in, and you're safe at home. Well, home base is based on something called attachment theory, which says that basically we're we, we, if we have a strong base, raise up a child in the way he should go, and when he or she is old, they will not depart. Why? That's home base. Home base is a place of safety. Home base, home base is a place of, of love and acceptance and uh, security, which then affects our self-esteem, the way we esteem ourselves, what value we put ourselves, our self-concept, what we think about ourselves, our self-image, what we see in us. When we look at the mirror, do we see, oh, man, I'm fat, ugly, stupid, skinny, or whatever? Or is it mad? I look at myself and go, oh, man, I'm looking good today. Ah! Got my Hawaiian shirt on. Bam! (laughs) So, Holy Spirit, without your help, I can't do this. And without your help, they can't get it. And those watching online can't get it either. I pray, number one, please, Papa, anoint me with this message that you gave me to give to them. And secondly, anoint them to get it and to apply it to their lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen? Now, when I first came, I was only supposed to preach Sunday morning, and Dr. Morocco called me. He's my mentor, and said, Paula, what are you doing the rest of the week? I said, Doc, whatever you want me to do. I love to serve. I got a towel around my waist. So he said, listen, uh, come to Maui today. So I'm flying out of here, going to Maui tonight after the second service, and preaching there. And then he says, I want you to go back on Wednesday night to uh, Kings, Oahu. And uh, I'm going to continue on this series. So I'm going to... 
we're going to go really down deep. I'm telling you, friends, if you've ever struggled with depression, guilt, poor self-esteem, you name it, we're going to focus on this. My mentor taught me this, and, and this is his book. So as much as I can, I get this in people's hands. Uh, if it sells out, just go to paulmarkgoulet.com, and, and uh, the team put that on there, and you can, I think, even do an ebook or something. I don't know. I don't do ebooks, but you might do it. Okay, let's grab the notes here, and let's grab a Bible. All right. Um, I hope that helps you guys. It helped me. All right, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. All right, now let's be totally honest. How many of you ever have fear? Now, some of you are not lifting up your hands. I assume you struggle with lying. <laughs> so let's try that one more time, one more chance. <laughs> How many of you ever struggle with some type of fear? Yeah, it's a, there's thousands of types of fears. There's agoraphobia, there's acnophobia, there's, uh, uh, there's fear of heights. What are some other fears? Huh? Oh, sickness, sorry, yes. Yeah, someone else, nice and loud. Yes, fear of rejection, act. Yeah, you know, Dr. Uh, Robert McGee wrote a book called The Search for Significance, and he said there's three primary fears, the fear of failure, the fear of punishment, and the fear of rejection. And the fourth emotion is shame. So let that sink in, and that's a great book called Search for Significance. I'm not going to talk about it today, but you guys can read it. It's a great book. So obviously, I've, I know a little bit about this stuff, and I'm going to try to resource you in the Holy Spirit, but also knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. People perish if they don't have knowledge, and that's the, the Greek word in the, in the New Testament is gnosko, is to know experientially, not just, oh, I know how to live a healthy life. I'm actually living a healthy life. So that's the difference between just knowing something and being educated but stupid <laughs> and actually knowing something and doing it, right? Do we all want to do it? All right, so it says here that uh, when you are made perfect, you are made perfect in love, there is no fear. <clears throat> I think as Christians, we just accept the fear is a reality. But biblically, it says right here that if you are in the perfect love, the perfect love, everybody say perfect. Now the word perfect means complete, not needing anything. So we're going to break this down a little bit. Thank you so much, sir. I mean, I've got a, an, I don't know, did you guys get this uh, message? Did you all get it? Oh, look at that. That's a Bible verse. All right, I love the first slide because it's a dog. Did you, did you get that one? Okay, what are you asking? <laughs> What are you asking God for? <laughs> I love that. It's, just, it's me. <laughs> so as we read this, there's five words I want to underline for you because I love, I'm, I'm a, I love to study my Bible. I, I, I heard my brother over there starting a, a, a home group called uh, Game Changers. Shaka! I read that book. I don't know who wrote it. The guy's a genius. I love that guy. Some of you obviously haven't read it because I wrote it. <laughs> Because you didn't get my joke. <laughs> All right, five words. I want you to write these down. Number one, fear. It's the word phobos in the Greek. Where we get our word phobia from. And literally in, in the DSM-3, which is a psychological diagnostic, to, diagnostic tool, there's well over a thousand different types of fear. And we could spend time naming them right now, but you know what they are. What's your fear? The second word we're going to underline is the word agape, which is unconditional perfect love. The word perfect there means without need, without anything that you need. I've been really living in my, my journey now because um, some of you guys know that I had a stroke, two strokes and a brain bleed five years ago. And they said, don't go skiing, I ski. Don't climb, I climb. Don't bike, I bike. So I've had a miracle. I really have had a miracle, and I did a lot of things that doctors told me, and then I went into oxygen chambers and EMDR and all these other supplements and all that, and I'm living really healthy right now, and I, and I didn't know how healthy, but 18 months ago, I went for brain scans, and they said, Mr. Goulet, we noticed you had concussions when you played sports. I had about four of them. 
I played hockey, rugby, uh, football, baseball, and I, and I fought. <laughs> uh, so a bunch of concussions. And those show up 50 years later. So they said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Problem areas. Oh, yeah, the, the, that's where you had the stroke. Yeah, two, yeah, yeah, right there. And the stroke part is actually black. You, your brain's dead in that part. People say, you're brain dead. I had to go, yes, you're right. Right back there. So, so I had that test done. They said, man, you need rest and you need this and you need that. So I did everything they told me to do over about a 16, 17-month period. And took time off from work and really just exercise and try to eat better. And I got on all their supplements. And it was just a, a lot of things that I did for brain health. Everybody say brain health. Because don't forget, last time I was here, I talked about body, soul, and spirit. Your body does count. We can't just be spiritual people. We're body, soul, and spirit. John said that you might be whole. Actually, Paul said that. You might be whole, 1 Thessalonians 5. Body, soul, and spirit. So I, I went for the testing. They showed me problem areas, and I worked on it for about 16 months. I went back for a second set of testing, and I was going through a lot of stress uh, during my second test. I didn't know how I'd do. And it, it, this is a great miracle because perfect love casts out fear. People said you can't go, don't bike, bike anymore. Don't, don't go to high altitudes anymore. So I bought a cabin on a mountain. <laughs> Because I don't live in fear. I'm in perfect love. I, I've got the perfect love of the Father. That's my home base. It's my safety place from which I start a new company. I, I jump out of the boat and I'm starting to be a volunteer instead of getting a paycheck. Am I crazy? No. I, I ha, I'm living in the perfect love of my Father. And because of that perfect love, I'm able to jump out and obey, the, obey God. Now, the scripture there, it says that this perfect love, this complete love that needs nothing, did a miracle in my life. So I go for the testing, and I'm a little nervous at the results because they ran me through all these tests and brain scans and the whole deal. And uh, the gentleman, Dr. Johnson, said, well, Paula, you've been healed here, 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 here. That's doing better. Good job. You're doing a great job of following uh, our leadership. Great. Thank you, sir. Awesome. I was really, really excited. And then he says, we did cognitive testing on you, which is my ability to reason. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I'm feeling stressed out right now. It's probably going to score low, Ba ba ba. He says, the maximum score is 22. That's the best score cognitively you can get. I'm thinking, oh, no, I probably got a 12. I was discouraged. Anybody ever get discouraged here? I was discouraged. And he goes, Mr. Gulo, you got a 21 out of 22. And he says, you only lost one point because you're thinking too, uh, 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 too uh, concretely about a situation instead of being more abstract. I'm thinking, I got a 21. <laughs> uh, the scarecrow does have a brain. If I only had a brain. It was awesome. Totally awesome. And, and so he says, yeah, 21 out of 22. He says, oh, by the way, you don't have dementia, <laughs> which people have accused me of having. <laughs> And he said, secondly, you will never have dementia. Now, obviously, because concussions and strokes sometimes lead to dementia. He says, you, number one, you don't have it, and you never will. He says, you have a healthy brain. Someone say amen to that. Yeah. Isn't that kind of cool? And so as we're going to end the call, I go, well, sir, uh, listen, I see a big black spot in this shot right there. He goes, that's from about 17 months ago, 16 months ago. He says, that, that area was dead. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's my, the strokes that I had. Not my stroke, but the strokes that I had. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's dead, black. And I go, well, over here, the, the new one, I said, there is no black. There's no, there's no dark. He says, Mr. Ule, you've been healed. It's like someone growing a kidney. It's like someone having a hole in their heart and all of a sudden the hole's gone. Somebody say amen. amen. So number one, the scarecrow has a brain. Number two, it's been healed. When he said that, I still have the video of it. I, I videotaped the chat because I wanted evidence that I'm not crazy. Especially jumping out of the boat as I'm doing right now just to put the towel around my waist and give stuff away and help people. We're doing our first event March 12th. You know what's gonna happen? Guess what's going to happen? We're going to give away a million dollars worth of product. Product. Diapers, baby furniture, beds, dining room sets, blah, 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 blah.
to veterans. In our state, and I'm sure it's the same thing, veterans are one of the most neglected. Any veterans here, I want to honor you. Any veterans here, you serve, come on, give them a big hand, please. Men and women, give them a big hand. So we've targeted 500 veterans, and we're going to give them a million, about a million dollars worth of product away to them. And the governor is now coming. <laughs> the governor's coming. Senators are coming. Uh, uh, city council members are coming. The who's who's in our city are coming. Why? Because something's happening. When I jumped out of the boat, all of a sudden, not, miracles are coming in. And he says, we're going to go get you a warehouse for free. God's doing miracles. Why? Perfect love casts out fear. Once you're in the perfect love of God, you take bold steps for your life. You go back to school. I told you last time I was here, I went back for my doctorate during COVID. I figured I'd, I'd try to improve my brain, and I went back. My first paper, I got an F. I think I told you that, Andrew, last time. I got, I got my first paper, I got an F. Hello. How many know that's bad? I found that out. I hadn't been in school in 40 years, but Fs are bad. I got an F. And he says, oh, but you made a mistake. I said, yeah, my paper. Yeah, you turn it in a week early. We're going to give you a week to fix it. I have like a 95 percentile right now in the school. I'm on dean's list, dean's list, dean's list, dean's list. I got a brain. God even let me go back to school and overcome my fear of failure. Does anybody here ever feel you, you fear failure? Anybody ever? Am I the only one that fears yeah, I've had that. Anybody ever feel rejection? You feel like, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. See, see, the thing is, is that perfect love casts out fear. So let's look at these words a little bit more closely. We've got three of them that we just identified, but let's jump in and, and identify the other ones. So we've got the word phobos. We've got the word agape. The word drives out is an interesting word. If any, any athletes here, Drew, you were an athlete, right? What would you play? Ping pong. Ping pong. <laughs> any athletes here? Anybody? Any golfers here? Okay, awesome. The word cast out or drive out is balo. Balo. Where we get our word ball from. It literally means to throw away. Throw away fear. It means to let go of it. Let go of fear. Choose faith out of the perfect love of the Father. He loves you perfectly. There's nothing more you can do to gain his approval. He loves you. Someone say, God loves me. Let go of the fear. It means to scatter it. So you take a ball, you throw the ball, you let go of the ball. That's what it means here. It literally means when you have the perfect love of God, you throw away, you let go of fear. You're no longer fear driven. That means you start your new company. That means you apply for a new job. That means you go back and get your education. That means if you have a company, you buy another truck. See, all of a sudden you are faith driven. You're based on, see, faith can't, Faith doesn't work if it's not based on love. Perfect love is your home base. And then faith comes from that. Because God loves me, I'll try this. Because God loves me, like Tuesday I'm doing a wedding ceremony. The gentleman is 50 years old. And he's always been afraid of getting married. And so I've been coaching him and praying for him and loving on him. And he's in a Bible study and in one of our small groups as well. And God's transforming his life. So now he says, listen, I'll fly you to Hawaii if you will do our wedding. <laughs> no, no, not Hawaii. Please, no, Lord. Not Hawaii. Uh, uh, uh. I get to wear my shirt. Yes. <laughs> You're thinking, is it okay to laugh this much in church? I know Pastor Josh is very funny as well, <laughs> so, but I like to laugh. So the next word is there is perfect, is teleos. And as I said, it, it means you need nothing. So now I'm, every week I'm in a meeting with the general in our, in our uh, over Nellis, the general, the general. Uh, never even spoken to a general before. I'm with uh, the right-hand man of the governor. I'm with uh, the uh, deputy director of, of um, Veterans Affairs in Nevada, Every week I'm meeting with them because we're planning this big event where we're going to shower these veterans with love. We're just going to pour love. And then we've got a group called Heroes 
Because with the concept of city service, not just giving products away, it's giving products and a connection to God. We call them heroes, volunteers at our church. Perfect. And then finally, the word, the fear of punishment is colossus. It means torment. Have you ever know, have you ever noticed that fear is like all con- I'm just so afraid. I'm afraid of when my kids are teenagers. I'm so afraid. Yeah, but they're only four years old. I know, but I'm afraid. No, I have people literally years, 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 years living in fear until their kids become teenagers. I'm just so afraid. Doesn't it torment you? See, the th- that's the word is torment. You know what torment means? It means it's like it beats you up forever. As long as you hold on to the fear. It's not something that's going to love you. A fear will torment you. The Bible says the fear of man is a snare. I'm just so afraid of my boss. Why? I'm just, hey, I've been, you're going to laugh at this. Some of you guys know that we did have uh, influence with, with the Republican Party in the U.S. You know that, right? Went to the White House a bunch of times, met the president a bunch of times, and we're part of policies, uh, prisoner reentry, we're part of that. Some of the big money that went to uh, fighting sex trade, we were part of that. We did stuff behind the scenes, so we had tremendous favor. And I was in prayer one day, and I thought, you know, Lord, we've kind of been pigeonholed as, as the right-wing Republican church. And I said, I said you know, although those are my, some of my views are there, I said, I, I, think, I think Democrats have souls too. I think libertarians have, and you may be some Democrats right here. God bless you guys. I really thought, why am I just going to one group of people? Why, why don't I just, and so I said, God, make me a Daniel or a Joseph. I said, I feel, and it sounds weird, but please don't be offended. I felt called to reach Democrats. I really did. Because I was so, I, we had so much favor from God on the other end. I thought, God, can you ever get past all the favor you gave me there in a new season so I can reach them and bring, because if I'm going to be a kingdom builder, that's your theme right now. If I'm going to be a kingdom builder, I can't let fear stop me from ministering and loving on Democrats and libertarians. Someone say amen to that. So. This guy asked me for a favor. He's the right-hand man of the governor. And I said, absolutely, I'll do that for you. We'll help. Because our church supports our state. And our state is run primarily by Democrats. I said, absolutely, we'll help you. Whatever we can do to help. And then I said, well, listen, tomorrow we're start launching something at our church called City Serve, And we're doing the big... So I said, would you like to come? So he's, he brings his son-in-law. He's six foot eight, Big old monster of a guy. Ex-UFC fighter. And he comes. And they just love it. They said, can we take you all out to lunch? And then he wrote a big check to get one of the trucks into our city to help, help the poor and help the needy. And, and he just went nuts. And then he says, listen, he says, I'm going to put a committee together of the top leaders in Nevada, and uh, I want you to chair that meeting. I said, no, I don't want to chair the meeting because I'm a towel guy now. I don't need to be in charge. He says, no, no, you're going to chair it. I'll be your president. He's the right-hand man of the governor. So he's been putting all these meetings together. And I'm thinking, only God can do that. And so he invites me to an event. Hey, I want you to go to a hockey game. I'll go to a hockey game anytime. He says, listen, can, I, uh, can, I, can we go to another event right before? I said, absolutely. Now, what was I praying? Make me a Daniel and a Joseph. Daniel was called the chief wizard. <laughs> Tell me, he, fought, he fit in. He was salt and light, right? We should be able to fit in anywhere. And second thing is, is Joseph was the right-hand man of the Pharaoh. Not born-again Christian, of course. There weren't Christians back then. <laughs> um, think about it for a second. I said, God, make me a Daniel and a Joseph. Put me with the Democrats and Libertarians. Put me with different groups. I don't care. Just put me in there. So guess where I was? <laughs> he brings me to a political event that a Democrat's running for office. For like the attorney general of our state. I'm invited, and I look around, and there's only Democrats. <laughs> I think God has a sense of humor. Because I only had to, I had to overcome my prejudice, one. Two, I had to overcome my fear. Three, I had to believe what I just prayed. God, make me a Joseph. Someone's, you got it. I don't know. I think if the perfect love of God is real and it's perfect, it lacks nothing, I should walk into any room and help change that room. So he's introducing me, and I'm thinking, just introduce me as Paul Mark Goulet. That's easier because you say, Pastor, they think you're from another planet. They think you, your, your blood is green and ah, Star Wars and everything. No, seriously. You say pastor and they go, mm, especially that group. 
And so I'm thinking, don't call me pastor, just call me Paul Mark. I don't need a title. I'm here with a, okay. So I show up, all of a sudden, hey, this is Pastor Paul from ICLV. Hashtag Republican Party. <laughs> Hashtag President Trump came three times. The only church in America, they did that. Hashtag nut job right wing. <laughs> Pastor Paul, I see every, every time I'm going, God help me. <laughs> it's going to have to be God. And then I'm thinking, I hope he doesn't mention the fact that I know Trump and I met him a bunch of times and, and um, we've been involved in policies and stuff like that. And, and so I'm thinking, oh, please don't say that, Pete. Please. So we walk up to a group. He goes, hey, this is the guy that had Trump at his church three times. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, no, don't say that. I'm an alien. I'm really weird now. We, had, we all started laughing. I said, don't hold it again. I can't remember what I said, but we laughed, and they're my friends now. So on March 12th, when we give away almost a million dollars worth of product, or maybe more, there's going to be the, the, the head, I'm not even going to mention their names, you know who you are, head Democrats of our state, including our governors coming. They all want to be part of the next phase of salt and light coming to our... So the concept I'm sharing with you today is I want you to think about what areas you're afraid of. Is it going in to people that are different? Going with them and spending time with them. I arrived uh, two days ago in, uh, uh, on this island and uh, I went to a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Hashtag, don't do that in Hawaii. <laughs> However, the waiter was super nice. Born here, because remember I always... I always say, what's your name? Where were you born? I knew his name. I won't repeat it. I remember it. I know where he's born, right here on this island. And, and uh, he's, a, he's done dancing. So he's a, you could tell he, he's just more into the other side of that creative spectrum. <laughs> and he goes, well, that's my sister over there. And, and um, she goes, yeah, I, I, I do shows. And I, he does shows too. I said, well, what show? Because I figure if I'm going to win the world, I've got to go and spend time with him. And be with them. Like Jesus sat with tax collectors and all. And I'm just thinking, if I'm really going to get out of the boat and, and have God send me anywhere because I'm fearless. Someone say fearless. fearless. Someone say fearless. fearless. Because I'm in the perfect love of God, Andrew. Guess what? I've got to be fearless. I've got to go wherever, whenever, however. I can't be afraid. not afraid of man. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of dying. I am not afraid. How many want to be not afraid? It's amazing. The fearless life, once you know that God loves you, he's got you. Now, I have the advantage, i got to admit, not because I was born with a silver spoon. I have an advantage because, as you know, I had a near-death experience in the back of an ambulance. Five years ago, I was dying. I was going to heaven. I was kind of floating. I saw my body. I saw the technicians. I was really in a, no fear. So I, I don't fear death. Paul said this, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? See, the fear of death is a really big thing. It's a really big thing, especially right now. Why do you think there's so many crazy lockdowns, shutdowns, masks, no masks, sanitation, all the rest? I'm not against any of that. Vaccines, this vaccine, whatever. whatever. I, you know, I'm not going to get into that. The essence here is not that. But it's based on fear. What do you? Now they're saying the last one is more like a flu. I've never been afraid of flu. I've never had a flu shot. I just not, I figured my, God gave me a good body. If I fill it full of good stuff, I can fight anything. Until I die. How many are going to die here? One, how many are going to die one day? You're all, look around. Some hands aren't up. I want to just touch you right now. Golden woman right there. No, no, how many are going to die one day? Let's try that one more time. You're all going to die. Yeah, we're going to die. The question is when and how? And the Bible says that all of our days are numbered. I figure when my number's up, I'm done. I thought I was done in the back of the ambulance. I said, God, would you let me come back? But you know what it did for me? It took away the fear of death. So when, when the, the doctors say, well, Paul, you shouldn't do this, I said, well, listen, can we compromise? Because they said, don't bike, and I love to bike. Can we compromise? He said, what do you mean? I said, how about if I wear a helmet? Okay, Paul, I, I don't recommend it. But now I wear a helmet. I said, and he says, well, you can't go skiing. I said, well, how about if I wear a helmet? 
It's like the same answer every time. How about if I wear a helmet? <laughs> you can't brush your teeth. How about if I wear a helmet? <laughs> Anybody still with me? Where are we getting to right now? If you understand the scripture, what you'll strive to do is encounter the love of God. Reject fear. Remember what Paul said to Timothy. Hey, Timothy. Hey, hey, Padawan. You did not get a spirit of fear from me when we laid hands on you. Where'd you get that thing? You get a spirit of power, love, and sound mind when I prayed for you. When, when the elders laid hands on you, you got a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Not a spirit of fear. Why? Because remember, we're emotional, we're, we're body, soul, and spirit. Don't forget. So he identified a spirit that was influencing Timothy. Now, sometimes it's not a spirit. Not everything's a spirit. Sometimes you just have normal fear. Like, I, I am terrified of snakes. Ah! But thank God I don't have a lot of snakes in my life. When I was in Madagascar trying to, to reach people for Jesus, we went in the slums, and they brought me to a lemur, a lemur, lemur like, like, like uh, Madagascar the movie. Trust me, the movie is not like the real Madagascar. The real Madagascar, they sell little girls for $5 a night. Sometimes it's the parents. $5 to have sex with a child. So I go there and after just a, just kind of, it rips, rips your guts out, your kidneys out. At the end of it, you're so spent because you're living in an alternate universe of just abuse and, and sex crimes. It's just terrible. And so we said, last day, let's go to a zoo or something and have a good time. And so we went and saw the lemurs because I thought Madagascar, the movie and, and all that. And it wasn't like that at all. I mean, there were lemurs there and they were kind of scary. I've got a video of one that just jumped in front of my face. And, but then, well, over there is the snake pit. <clears throat> Remember when Jesus said, you brood of vipers? He's talking about a snake pit. That's a nice complimentary thing, right? He's trying to build up their self-esteem. You brood of vipers. No, I, I went to a brood of vipers. And literally, as I walked up there, I felt my heart start beating. You know how you grab your heart, right? My heart starts beating. I go, and I literally, I started, Drew, I started crouch, Andrew, I started crouching my body right there. I started, literally, I felt my whole body react to what? Fear. And I, and I I've never been bitten by a snake. I've seen rattlesnakes in Vegas because there are rattlesnakes there in, in California, I mean, in, in Nevada and Arizona. But I, I just all of a sudden gripped me and I started walking there and I knew that it was emotional. It it become physical. My body went like this. My breathing changed. I felt it. And as I got there, I said, I got to overcome it. I got to overcome it. I got to overcome it. I'm in Jesus' name, I'm not afraid of those things. And by the way, they're five feet away. Okay. <laughs> you see, you got to let go of your fear. And sometimes it's spiritual, sometimes it's just emotional, sometimes it's relational fear. One out of four girls is molested in our country by the age of 16. One out of five. Guess what? There's a lot of abuse in our nation. And sometimes fear comes from actual trauma and abuse. Some of us have fear because we had a car accident and, and, and the trauma of that accident or, or the death of our mother when we were 11 years old. Trauma, trauma can sometimes cause Fear domination. I want this to really sink in. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Next slide, please. This is very significant what we're going to look at. What, to what torments you defines you. This is something that I was praying. I've not preached this message before. I, I wrote it just for you because I just was praying about it. Whatever you're afraid of will actually determine your fu future. It's very significant scripture. I want you to go to Job chapter 325. This is very, very powerful. That's why that book is so important. Because if we can conquer this, we can conquer anything. Y'all still with me? Am I going too fast? Am I going over your head? Hallelujah. Okay. Job chapter 3 verse 25. Very, very powerful scripture. It says this. Verse 24. For my sign comes before I eat, and my groanings pour out like water for the thing I greatly feared has come upon me and what I dreaded has happened to me your fear will determine your future the thing I am most afraid of and I'm going to challenge you on this and I'm doing it out of love 
you got to get rid of it. Bollow it, throw it away, scatter it, get rid of it. Why? Because it will torment you and it might even determine your future, which I believe it will. You got to conquer that thing in Jesus' name. Someone say, I'm going to conquer that thing in Jesus' name. And people say, well, what if it's emotional? Then <laughs> read the book and get some healing. <laughs> Go to a support group. Uh, uh, get into, involved in a small group Bible study. There's a lot of healing in small groups like that. I am a big believer of small groups. Huge, Drew. Huge, huge. Uh, relational. Go for marital counseling. Go for relational counseling. Um, get some prayer at the altar. Some of the best help I've gotten over these years has just been my normal Christian friends. I've got a circle of friends. I've got a great doctor, great psychiatrist. I've got great pastor. Dr. Morocco's uh, my mentor. I've got great people that surround me to make sure that there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. I surround myself. Why? Because I don't want to be dominated by fear. Say, Paul, did you ever have, be afraid that you're going to die? Yeah, even after that experience. Because that experience was very vivid. It was a tormenting experience for me. So I was afraid to leave home without a phone because of what happens if I fall down. Because I had horrible stuff happen to me during that time. So scripturally, what we have to realize is if we choose to let go of it, we will not let it create our future. But you can't just leave it. You can't just get rid of something based on nothing. I'm just, my sheer will is going to get rid of the fear. It's got to be based on the will of God. So let's practice this a little bit. God loves me and has a wonderful plan for my life. What would happen if you said that every day? I think it's Romans chapter 5. If God is for me, who can be against me? Paul said this, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want you to start doing this. Attack your fear with your words. Attack your fear and start declaring the truth about who you are. I, I'm a child of God. I'm loved by God. God has a destiny for my life. You've got to have a firm foundation in love, perfect love. The love of God becomes your home base. And from there, you go out. There's some days you're going to get afraid. You go back to home base in your Bible, in prayer, in worship, and you're getting a hold of the Holy Spirit. And from there, you venture out again. Sometimes we'll bang your head. Sometimes you'll have a setback. But the beautiful thing about home base is you can always go home. The home is the love of God, unconditional love of God. And I can't stress this enough for you. If you find the love of God and you learn it as your home base, you go out, venture, experiment, fail, succeed, go from glory to glory. That's our goal. Home base is your foundation, not performance. I feel so bad because I got an F. I got an F. I lived with it. It didn't kill me. I'm still alive. Performance can't define me, can't define you. How about insecurity? Insecurity can't define you. Don't let it define you. Anger, shame, guilt. See, what's your home base right now? Is it fear? Is it anger? Is it trauma? Is it ambition? Is it pride? Is it greed? Is it jealousy? I was so mad. I just did this. See, what's your home base now? If you can make the perfect love of God home base, you become a healthy person. Is anybody still here? Is this helping anybody? If you're a people pleaser, that's your home base. I'm just a perfectionist. Don't accept that. A perfectionist means that you'll never measure up to your own standards in your work. Get rid of perfectionism. People go, well, how'd you do this over 29 years? Your ministry has touched the world, blah, blah, blah. I said, man, I throw the spaghetti on the wall. Sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> no, that's true. That's my, hey, Paul, what's your secret of success? I make spaghetti. And I throw her on the wall. Have you ever failed? 10,000 times. Have you ever made mistakes? 50, I wish I was smart as Dr. Morocco. I really do. I'd always tell him, Doc, I'm not a good leader like you. You're, you're a great leader. You're my leader. <laughs> and he goes, Paul, no, you're a great leader. I love you. You're doing a great thing. I said, I may be doing a great thing, and I just think that God can speak through a donkey. Therefore, God can speak through me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not all that in a slice of bread. I, I'm sure you guys are. You're better looking than I am. You probably smell good, too. I don't want to get too close, but COVID, oh, I'm so afraid. I'm terrorized. I'm going to get the flu. Ah. <laughs> That's just an aside. No extra charge. All right. How are we doing for time here, doctor? A couple more minutes? Five minutes, okay. Are you guys still with me? All right. We're having fun, but we're also getting the word. 
I want to encourage you to establish your new home base, if you want to put that slide up, and that's perfect love. And I do this in a couple of ways. I, I have certain scriptures that are like my, in the back of my pocket, my home base pocket. You ready for this? I am perfectly made by God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, when he created mankind, he says, mm, very good. He didn't go, oh, shoot, I messed up. So someone say, I'm very good. Number two, I'm made in the image of God. Say, I'm made in the image of God. I'm very good. Say, I'm very good. God didn't mess up on you, friends. That, that self-esteem that you have is based on the world or something else. It's not based on the Bible. The other day I told you about my waiter, and then I uh, told you I was sitting next to his sister slash in transition. And I don't know if fully transitioned or not. You know the term in, in the... In fact, I, I, I used that term, Drew, the other day at my church. I said, guys, I'm in transition. It was a true story. And I meant I'm transitioning into retirement from senior leadership into other stuff. I said, I'm transitioning. So someone hacked my Facebook and said that I was bisexual. I guess I was in transition. But this person is in transition, I assume, and... And I just, I, all of a sudden, I felt this love of God for them. I've never been to a drag show, and I probably never will go to a drag show, but I thought, what if I went to a drag show? I'll, I'll talk to Dr. Morocco first. Doc, I'm going to a drag show. Not that I'm interested, but they need Jesus too. I'm literally, I'm fearless. See, the thing is, when we become fearless, it's based on love, not judgmentalism, not pride. I always tell people, I... I catch people for the Lord. I, I don't clean the fish. I just catch the fish. I let the Holy Spirit clean them. Whether they're transgender or whatever other title they might have accepted because of our culture. I don't know. I, I just, I think if I'm grounded in perfect love, then, then maybe God can put me with them and love them. Someone say amen to that. There's another scripture in the New Testament that says you're God's work of art. I think it's in 1 Peter. You're God's work of art. I'm a work of art. Someone say, I'm a work of art. Look at someone say, you're a work of art. Sometimes I feel like I'm a Picasso, but I'm still a work of art. <laughs> Some of you got that joke. <laughs> I'm making up as I go along, no extra charge. <laughs> I'm forgiven. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm destined for the abundant life. Say it with me. I'm forgiven. I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm destined for the abundant life. I love this in Psalm 139. Before you lived one day, all of your works were written in the, book of life, in, the, in the book. There's a book of life and there's the book. The book is actually what you do. It's your script of life. Whether you live it or not is up to your decision to surrender it to his will. To live based on a perfect life, perfect love, which then lets you live an amazing life. You got to make the decision that there is a destiny, a script in heaven for you, and that you can live it if you're based on love. Not on hatred, not on prejudice, not on fear. I am redeemed by his sacrifice. I'm washed in his blood. A lot of new churches never mention the blood of Jesus. I'm thinking then you forgot your Bible. I'm washed in his blood. It sounds disgusting and gross, and I know it's not, it's not you know, seeker sensitive, but it's God sensitive. I'm washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm cleansed, I'm cleansed. I'm covered by his love. I am perfectly and wonderfully made. Say it with me. I'm perfectly and wonderfully made. I'm going to, head this to, back to hand this back to, to Dr. Jo, Dr. Jo, Dr. Drew. I almost called you Dr. Josh. I'm going to hand it back to Drew. <laughs> I'm going to hand it back to Drew for a minute, and then, I, and then I'm going to come back because the prayer today and the altar call is going to be very specific about making a choice to follow fear. And you got to baller with the rest of your life. Be a baller. Bam. Be a baller. Baller that fear out of your life. I can't do it for you. Now I can pray for you. We can renounce it together. We can come into agreement together. But ultimately every day you say, I reject fear of failure. I reject fear of rejection. I reject the, uh, the fear of hell. Some people are still afraid of hell. What the heck? Are we going to heaven because of the blood of Jesus Christ? Why are you afraid of hell? On my way to heaven, shout in victory. On my way to heaven, shout. See, I'm not afraid of hell. I was going to heaven. I said, can I come back to give stuff more, more stuff away? See, why? Because I'm fearless. And you know that today, from today on, you can make that choice too. And I, I want to pray that for you at the end of this time. Dr. Drew. 
I kind of like that. <laughs> oh, man. Wasn't that awesome? Come on, Jesus. I'm already encouraged. Hey, we wanted to make, make sure that we gave Pastor Paul time to minister to you. But before we do that, I want to give you an opportunity to sow into the word, into what he's doing. How many of you believe in what God's doing through him and getting ready to do through him in, in Vegas and Nevada and even, even here in Kings? That is wonderful. But let's, let's take an opportunity to give. Amen. And, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that as you sow into a word, something happens. And something takes place. So if you want to give tonight or this morning, excuse me, go ahead and lift up your hand. And our ushers have envelopes. Go ahead and uh, make sure everyone gets one that has their hand up, please. You can also give online. If you're giving on King Central or online, go ahead and select other and then guest. Or in fact, you can even go ahead and just select guest and then just write Paul Goulet there on the line and do the same with your envelope. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for a word that went forth with power. God, a timely word, and now word for for your people. God, for this season, for right now, right where they're at. And Lord God, I pray for your, your anointing to be upon them. God, as they give, as they sow into this word, Lord, I pray that they would be taking a step, God, towards casting off fear. Lord God, that you would use them, Father God. And Lord, we pray for Pastor Paul and what you're doing through him, Father God, in this next season. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be a part of it. God, I just pray that you would you would anoint him and bless him and use him mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Paul, why don't you come and minister to us? Thank you, Dr. Drew. Kind of sounds famous, doesn't it? Now, how's that working for you? <laughs> we love because he first loved us. Some of you are still defining your Christian walk as religious. Do's and don'ts. You're still living in kind of like an Old Testament theology. Once we accept the full grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, he paid it all. Remember the old song, he owed a dead, he did not. I owed a dead. Oh, shoot, I forget the, 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 all the terms, but you, you remember that? It's an old song. You forget it anyway, but. I want to go back to that scripture and just end with this. And then I'm going to pray for you. Number one, if you need miracles, today is a good day. Thank you for giving, by the way. I'm now on the 12th. I'll be unemployed. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> Thanks for giving, guys. I appreciate it. The books are going to be in lobby, too. There's only 52 of them. So if you, uh, if you buy them all and, and make the second service jealous, they'll have to define, they'll have to repent of jealousy. So help them out spiritually. Yeah, just go buy them. Just help them out spiritually and, and the second service will be jealous and we'll have a deliverance service, <laughs> second service. But I do want to remind you, like Dr. Morocco said, he asked me to come back Wednesday night because this is so deep. This is so deep, friends. And bring all your friends because we're not talking about a half gospel. We're talking about a whole gospel. Body, soul, and spirit. And I know, can I be honest with you? Most Christians are not, most Christians just battle with fear all the time and it controls them. And it's time that we bottle that thing. We get rid of it. We just scatter it. We get, throw it out the window and, and let the dog chase it and let someone else live with it, not you. Because the bottom line is that if you're grounded in perfect love, it makes the tree strong and you bear much fruit. So here's the scripture. Verse 17 of 1 John 4, which is the one that preceded the one we read. Love has been perfected among us. Wow. So in other words, it doesn't just come as a whole. We gotta learn that we are loved by God and we gotta embrace it ourselves. We've been perfected in it. That we may have boldness. Uh-oh. So as I've got home base of love set by the, God, the perfect love of God, I'm bold. Someone say bold. Look at someone say be bold. I have boldness in the day of judgment. In other words, I'm not afraid of judgment day. I'm not afraid of hell. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Because as he is, well, I'm almost there. But as he is, so are we in this world. Then it goes, there's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. We're going to get rid of that. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So therefore, we have to be made perfect in love means without want literally there's nothing there's not a car that I need now there's not a whatever they say how could you give up all your paychecks and benefits so that stuff doesn't define me I'm jump obedience should define me a fearless life should define me 
Anybody still with me? So here's the last scripture. Verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. Bam. Right? You're a good golfer, by the way. We got to play golf while I'm here. I'm just telling you right now, and I'm not afraid of you beating me again. No fear! Someone shout out, no fear! I want everybody to stand. Let's all stand in the presence of God. And I, you know, the words are powerful, right? The Bible says words are life and death. So I want you to do this. I want you to picture your fear. It could be fear of finances, the fear of rejection, fear of getting a divorce, fear of your kids rebelling, fear of, fear of dying, fear of growing old. I had someone the other day, they're like 38 years old, and they had, a gray, they had a gray hair. Oh, my goodness, it was the end of their day. I'm just, oh, my God, I got a gray hair. I said, you got one. Shut up. <laughs> no, I didn't really say that. No, I did. <laughs> What are you talking about fear growing old, man? The Bible says the gray hair is a crown. I don't dye my hair. This is my crown, man. It's the only one I have left. All my titles are gone now. I'm just going to be a volunteer. Why? Because I still got a crown right here. All our gray hair people out there, we all got a crown. Some people have less gray hair because you lost it. God bless you. Thank you for your donation. Is anybody still here? Anybody want some of this? I want you to close your eyes and I want you to picture whatever fear that is. Maybe it's a fear of sickness or, or fear of COVID or fear of whatever. And I literally want you to look at it and just picture that in your mind's eye. And I want you to just tell it to go to hell. Just say, go to hell in Jesus' name. Just come on, rebuke that thing and just follow it. Kick it out. Say, go to hell in Jesus' name. This fear of rejection, this fear of, 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 of punishment, the fear of and the shame that's been trying to govern your life. Look at it say right now, just go to hell in Jesus' name. We, we know where it comes from. It comes from our past. But now we're substituting it with the perfect love of God. Perfect love of God. So one more time, look at that fear and say, I reject this fear in Jesus' name. I choose to let it go. And I invite the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I can't hear you. And I invite, say with me, I invite a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I won't be afraid of sickness. I won't be afraid of death. I won't be afraid of failure. I will be bold starting with today. Hear my Lord, send me. I'm going to be bold with my company with my family, with the love. I'm grounded in you right now in Jesus' name. Now, I don't know what song's in your spirit, but I want you to do this. We're just gonna sing one song, whatever's, the, whatever's in their spirit, and I want you just to lift up your hands and wait a moment and say, Holy Spirit, come now. Come, Holy Spirit. I want to be grounded in the perfect love of God. Can you do that? What song's in your spirit? Just release it. Lift up your hands. I will build my life.
say, I will no longer live in fear. It's going to be a daily battle, friends, but you'll see more and more victory when you shift from fear-based to perfect love-based. If you want to make that shift, I want you to come to that altar right now. you got a great voice, by the way, worship leader. I don't know who you are, but I like your shirt, too. <laughs> but you remember, you know that song, The Sloppy Wet Kiss? He's Jealous for Me. Do you know that song? Yeah. Could you sing that? Because it's just... And by the way, I love your fancy shoes there. Look at those fancy shoes she has on. Are those called pumps? What are those things called? High heels. Okay. <laughs> I have a little bit of ADHD. Please forgive me. I notice stuff. But you know what I'm noticing right now? There's the Holy Spirit in this room. Can you start singing that song, team? And just let's release that song. I, I know we've got another service that's going to start in a little while, but we've got a few moments. And... I just don't want to miss this moment. Wow, I felt that right there. There's a, there's a massive exchange. As you come to this altar, just I want you to imagine that you're redeeming love. So you're handing in your little ticket because Jesus redeemed it for you. But he's giving you the claim ticket. It's in the Bible. And as you come forward right now, you're going to lay down that claim ticket, all the fears, all the rejection, all the pain, all the trauma, and you literally say, I'm going to get what was redeemed for me, the perfect love of God. Can you sing that nice and loud, please? And let's fill this at sanctuary. If you're watching online, as we're singing this song, can you receive the perfect love of God? It's an exchange right now. Give them the claim ticket. It's the promises of God. And begin to just embrace that thing. Embrace the perfect love of God. Reject the spirit of fear. Bottle it. Re be healed of the emotional side and the relational side. But we're going to make a decision right now. We're doing that right now. Ready? Come on up. If that's you, come on up. Come on up. Come on. Let's sing that song. Come on with all your heart.
just like butterflies dancing around your heads. It's the weirdest thing. It's just so cool. I feel the presence of God, but I see it in my spirit. He's, come on, let him feel you from the top of your head. 